Hello there, everybody. This is Alan Feldman from the Laguna Woods Democratic Club. And thank you for taking your time to watch and join us today. It's an election year. Our general election is scheduled for November the 3rd, and it's a presidential election, so we know a lot of people will be paying attention. But there's been some changes, and one of the big changes has been in the date of our primary election. Historically, in California, the primary has been in June, but now it's been moved. Our primary is now in March. This year, it's March the 3rd. That's less than two months as we sit here today. If you've watched us on TV before, you know that we bring you candidates running for office, elective office in our local area. And we're going to do the same thing today, but just a little bit different. Today, we're going to be talking to two people who are running for an office inside the Democratic Party. We're going to play a little inside baseball. Both Janice Burston and Jonathan Adler are currently elected members of and candidates for re-election to the Democratic Party of Orange County Central Committee. Now, we're going to let Janice and Jonathan tell you what the Central Committee is and why it's important. But something that is important about this election, this coming election, March 3rd is the primary election. California primaries, the top two vote getters for most offices move on and run against each other in the November election. But for the Central Committee, this is the election. The people who get the most votes for the Central Committee will be elected to the Central Committee in March. Now, the Central Committee elects its members by assembly district. Our local district here is 74th. There are six members of the Central Committee from the 74th Assembly District. There are 17 candidates for those six seats. So this puts a little more important a little more importance on this election. Well, we have two people to speak to. We're going to speak with them separately to make sure that you have a really good chance to hear and see them clearly. And we're going to start with Janice Burston. Hi, Janice. Hello, Alan. <laughs> Janice uh, is a candidate. She's an elected member right now of the uh, uh, Democratic Party of Orange County Central Committee. Uh, she's running for re-election. And a lot of you, I know, know Janice personally. Uh, a lot more people from around town know who Janice is. They've met her, they've spoke with her, and so forth. She's not a stranger to people around here. But even though people know a lot about you, you know, give us a minute or two. Just tell us about yourself, your background, you know, just whatever you care to share with people. Right. I moved into uh, Laguna Woods 12 years ago. And I'm originally from New York City, where I was a teacher for over 25 years for the New York City Board of Education. And uh, I was married. I have two grown daughters and four grandchildren. And I came out here to retire. And after a few years, when I finally moved into Laguna Woods, I was struck by needing to make a better, this world a better place, this country yeah. a better place. And when uh, Barack Obama picked Joe Biden, that was the day I was struck political. Even though I was a teacher in New York and I'm an active union member, I felt the need to put my feet on the ground and get out there and communicate with the people and get them to vote for Barack Obama and Joe Biden. And uh, I didn't even know there was a Democratic club in Laguna Woods, which, which I find from talking to people. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. So I met someone at a, a progressive meeting, and uh, they said, Did you, have you ever been to the Democratic club? And I was shocked that there was one. And I, was, uh, I became active right away. Um, I'm the Democratic club of Laguna Woods, the first activism chair. And that's been, uh, that was over 10 years ago. Hey, you know, it, it strikes me in, in listening to, to Janice and background in education. Uh, I'm not a teacher, uh, but when you think about it, I, I can't think of a better background for anybody uh, to do the kind of work that's called for. We'll talk about exactly what is called for on the Central Committee in a meeting, but in a minute. But really, so much of this work is communication. Uh, communicating not only with your fellow committee members, but communicating with the public. 
And that's what teachers do. Teachers are communicating. Janice has been communicating for people for 25 years professionally. And I'm sure in the school, if there were any students like me, uh, 25 years of talking to people, communicating with people who didn't want to be communicated with. Uh, so it's, not, it's, a, it's, a good way to it's a good way to come into this. And anybody who knows Janice knows that she communicates with style. Uh, uh, but let's get to the, let's get to the nitty gritty here. Right. You're the first person we're speaking to, so you get the jackpot question. What the hell is the Central Committee, and what right. does it do? Right. Well, a lot of people wonder about that. Um, let me take one step higher. We have a California Democratic Party, which is the overseer of all things Democratic. Right. They're the top dog, banana, whatever. Um, there are 58 counties in California which I found from doing some research for this interview. And I was amazed there were so many counties. That's a lot of, and each county has a central committee, a Democratic and Republican. And uh, it's like, we all have to work together in a cohesive manner, which when you go to the con state convention, you find it's not always that cohesive. Yeah, really. <laughs> so. <laughs> The Democratic Party of Orange County has a certain structure. We have a chair at the top who is Ada Brasino. This chair is elected every two years. Our former chair was Fran Sadow. Some people here in the village know her. There are four vice chairs under the right. chair, designated by the, four, the directions. West, north. Right, all, all different parts of the county. South and central, right. so I guess there's no east. Right. And there's a treasurer and there's a secretary. And these positions uh, are elected every two years. Even though now, well, in the past, central committee members used to be elected every two years. And when I first became a central committee member, uh, in 2013, the law was changed to every four years. Yeah. So the Central Committee members have, can have more longevity than the higher. What's their function? Uh, what, what is the Central Committee supposed well, to do? The Central Committee members represent their constituency in each assembly district. There are seven assembly districts and six assemb uh, committee members, Central Committee members. So we have 42 elected Central Committee right. members. And each member must have an alternate to vote in their place. So we have monthly meetings. Uh, now they're the fourth Monday of every month. Uh, if the member cannot, the elected member cannot attend, they are alternate. That's why we have alternates to attend, because we need a representation of all the assembly districts representing the constituents. Uh, what, kind of, what kind of issues, what kind of, what kind of things get discussed and argued about and voted on by right. the members of the committee, the central committee? Well, the, the issues are the issues of the people. Every, uh, uh, all the issues that we're trying to uh, address in Orange County and make a better place for most people, such as the issue of uh, homelessness, the issue of better schools, uh, rent to have, where well, we won't have outrageous rent hikes, uh, there, we, we rep, there are very rarely do we talk about the crime, but that is an issue right. in Orange County. Right. It's an issue everywhere. Everybody yeah. has a fear and, yeah, of could crime. Be. But uh, we, we hear from different candidates for different offices who seek the Central Committee's endorsement. Right. And that seems to be a large part of uh, what I feel what we do, because the candidates for varying positions from the city to the state and the county. They come to uh, ask for our endorsement. Many times we have, uh, uh, they get up and make speeches. We have people who speak for them. 
Sometimes we have people who speak against them. Right. And uh, that becomes a, a time-consuming thing at each meeting. Yeah, it's not. Um, yeah, I, I, I know I go to central committee right. meetings, too. Uh, so, no, they're not short. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, and, absolutely. And yeah, they're quite fractious. Sometimes some issues are con very controversial. Yeah, so let me ask you, personally, what do you think are the biggest problems, the biggest issues that we face here in Orange County? You know, it's, a, it's such a tough, it's a tough question to answer because Orange County is so big and diverse, not only with population, but just uh, it, you know, economics. It's, it's like a microcosm of the whole country. So what do you think right. the most important issues are? Well, for many, many years, there was a Republican stranglehold on this county, mm -hmm. meaning almost all the elected positions were held by Republicans. Now, since we've had the blue wave in the 2018 elections, we have, we've turned Orange County blue in each of the congressional districts. And also, with, we're lucky to have a representative, uh, Connie Petrie Norris, yeah. in the 74th. However, we need to recruit into other positions, such as the OC Board of Ed, the Board of Supervisors, uh, city councils. Even though they're supposed to be nonpartisan, they still, if you have de more Democrats, yeah. they represent Democratic values. It's a different point of view. So we need to get, recruit good, electable Democratic candidates. We need to uh, get at the vote for them. We need to make their names known, and we need to change a lot of the inner structure of what's going on, especially the Board of Supervisors. Because right, we've, we've run out of time, but I just want, I want to say one thing we didn't get to, so I'll blow your horn instead of having you blow it for yourself. Uh, Janice has a, a, a specialty. Part of the uh, obligations of a Central Committee member uh, is, well, it's educating the public, it's activism, it's rallying the public. And Janice is, in addition to being on the Central Committee, she is the uh, Laguna Woods Democratic Club activism chairman. She mentioned that. And Janice is a curator of information. After the 2016 election, there must have been a thousand groups that popped up organically every day. Uh, and they all have events, they all have meetings, they all have demonstrations. Janice really is a curator of information. She lets us know how, when, and where we can participate in political activity all around Laguna Woods. She organizes demonstrations herself. She organizes as important as demonstrations as carpools. People have to get where they're going. It's an invaluable service for us, especially right here in our own community when so many people want to participate but have issues. They have to know if something is right for them or not. If you can't walk, you don't want to go to a march. That's, that's a real big service that Janice, that Janice performs. So Janice, I want to thank you very much. And remember, Janice Burstyn, running for the Central Committee of the Democratic Part, Party of Orange County, be, be reelected. She's on the committee now, and she needs to be reelected. Thank you again very much for being here. Right. Thank you, Alan. Hi, we're going to speak now with Jonathan Adler. And Jonathan, just like Janice, is a current elected member of the Democratic Party of Orange County, sometimes called the DPOC, is Central Committee, and he too is running for re-election. And just like Janice, a lot of people know Jonathan personally, and many people know Jonathan from around Village. They've heard him speak, they've seen him talk. Uh, so again, somebody who is not a stranger to most of the people around here. Jonathan, thank you very much. Thank and, you. You know, same thing, we start with Janice, we'll start with you. Why don't you just tell us, whatever you care to share, tell people a little bit about yourself and uh, who you are. Well, I got into politics at the age of six, <laughs> and it was a huge mistake because we were in the Bill Dave Rangers day play group, yeah. and, all, and the, all the big kid asked, who are you for in the election? And everybody said, Dewey until they got to me, and I didn't know who else was running, so I said Dewey. Dewey. And that was the last yeah. Republican I've supported. <laughs> a lifelong Democrat. But, yeah, but I, I come from, from New York City and a, a liberal Democratic family, and I was kind of raised with that, and that's um, what I've, I've been doing, uh, both in my legal career and 
in, in uh, politics. Okay, well, Jonathan's, uh, uh, you know, you're kind of shortchanging yourself. I think that people should have some, some idea. Jo Jonathan's a graduate of Harvard University. Uh, he got his law degree at Yale. Uh, he's been out in California for many, many years. Jonathan uh, clerked at the California State Supreme Court. He's argued cases in front of the California State Supreme Court. He founded a public service uh, law firm. Uh, he worked both sides of the criminal justice system. He was assistant district attorney. He's also a defense attorney. Uh, and going way back, Jonathan's political, uh, uh, political work uh, back in the Richard Nixon administration. People might remember the name Harold Carswell, who was a defeated nominee for the Supreme Court. Jonathan organized a research effort about Harold Carswell, submitted written, I don't know if you call it a brief or documents to uh, the United States Senate. It was answered into the, into the Senate record. Charts, graphs, and data <laughs> on his uh, judicial record. Right, and according to Senator Ted Kennedy, uh, it was the uh, kind of the tipping point, the final, the final straw on the defeat of, narrow defeat of Harold Carswell. So Jonathan kind of like goes way back when it, when it comes to this. And, uh, so what I, wanted to, what I wanted to ask you, Janice gave us a, a good overview of, of the Central Committee and what it does, but the Central Committee is more than it's, it's just like grand body. There's committees, and I know you're very active on them, so you want to talk a little bit about that, and, your, and also your involvement in the committee. Yes, well, the, the um, uh, DPFC, the Central Committee, the body that governs the Democratic Party in Orange County, does its work largely through committees, and that includes you know, recruiting candidates, ra fundraising, organizing, get out the vote, um, taking positions on issues, um, chartering clubs, overseeing, supporting the clubs that do a lot of the work, and the 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 the, the, the basic committees of of the of the body, the DPOC, are the resolutions committee which takes positions on issues, the legislative committee, which recommends for or against pending legislation or calls for legislation, and there's a bylaws and rules committee, which really sets the structure of the uh, organization, and, uh, and there are all kinds of issues involved in how the organization uh, involves and relates to its members, serves democracy at the grassroots level, how it does the, its endorsement processes, and everything else that has to do with, essentially, the rule of law for the party, which is you know, observing its bylaws and those of the California Democratic Party, the CDP, the right. big structure, which we have to follow, and um, uh, operating in that way that uh, uh, serves the interests of voters, constituents, and the members of the body. And you're active on a lot of those committees. I have been too. very active on all three of those, and I just love it. Um, I'm a, I'm the, I've been the parliamentarian for the, for the uh, DPOC for most of the last five years. Uh, parliamentary law is not some deep, dark, arcane art. Uh. It's d designed to facilitate, serve, protect the rights of members, help the body get to decisions and all that stuff. All, and the, we have a, a Roberts Rule Study Club right. in Laguna Woods, right. and I love to teach uh, parliamentary law and Roberts Rules there. Yeah, you know, let me, let me, let me say one thing about, about this. People, when you say political committee to people, everybody flashes on to Boss Tweed. You know, they see a, a lot of people sitting around smoking cigars, drinking whiskey, and assigning people to the police department. Let me assure you that the Central Committee of the Democratic Party of Orange County is not like that. It is extremely fractious. They have a lot of people with have a lot to say and big egos. They want to say it, and they will go. They will argue about anything. They'll argue about policy. They'll argue about procedure. And Jonathan is the parliamentarian. He tells the chair of the par of the party, Ada Bracero, how to rule. And let me tell you, if it was not for Jonathan, and that might not m matter much to people who don't go to these meetings, but to us who do. Uh, we'd still be at November's meeting if Ada did not make the rulings the way Jonathan does. He really keeps the wheels moving at the Central Committee. Otherwise, 
literally nothing would get done. So, hey, thank you. Thank you for getting me home at a reasonable hour. Several well, you times. know, Alan, you, you, everybody <laughs> knows, I think, the, Will Rod, the famous Will Rogers saying, I'm not a member of any organized political party. Right. I'm a Democrat. Right. Ain't it the truth? <laughs> well, no, it's not really the truth. We are, uh, we are yes, uh, uh, they, there are issues that, that we fight about, but very quickly come together, accept... Uh, you know the the kind of the, often the pragmatic uh, solution to to issues right. and, and move on. We do that in a very efficient way. Uh, so let me ask you. We're running out of time. I've got about a minute left, but I want to ask you if you could just quickly. What do you think that the the most important issue facing us here in Orange County is? Transportation, uh, housing, um, health care is more a national issue. Uh, conditions of life. Water quality, air quality, open space, development, uh, those are issues in which we often, we as, as Democratic Party of Orange County, DPOC, often weigh in with resolutions in support of uh, California legislation, Board of Supervisors actions, and elections uh, from top to bottom that elect people who are going to carry out uh, those values that, that um, uh, Democrats have held. Okay. Jonathan, thank you very much. Thanks to Janice very much, too. It was a pleasure to have both of you here. And don't forget this election. March the 3rd is the election. It's a primary, but when it comes to the Central Committee of the Democratic Party of Orange County, this is the real election. So don't forget to vote. It'll be Okay, we've been talking with Jonathan Adler and Janice Burston, both currently elected members of the Democratic Party of Orange County Central Committee and both candidates for re-election. You know, we're fortunate. We have two people from our own community who understand the vital importance to us of various government programs and policies, right representing us right in the middle of the Democratic Party. If you're of retirement age or near retirement age, what is more important than having access to affordable health insurance through Medicare and access to an income through Social Security? If you're a family living in a middle class or working class neighborhood in Orange or Anaheim, you've got a different priority. Your priority is going to be different than people who live in Laguna Woods Village. Having Jonathan and Janice on the Central Committee has really helped to assure that these issues Medicare and Social Security, which are, let's face it, to some of us, literally life and death issues, receive the continued support and attention that they really need. Having Janice and Jonathan on, this, on the Central Committee has really helped keep the Democratic Party in Orange County moving forward and moving forward in a direction that we can all support. How do you vote in this election? It's an election within the Democratic Party, so not everybody is eligible. You don't have to be a registered Democrat, but you do have to be a registered voter. If you are a registered Democrat, it's simple. This election will appear on the ballot that you get from the registrar of voters. If you are what's called in California non-party preference voter, you may hear it as NPP, somebody who's a registered voter but not aligned with any political party, you can request a Democratic primary ballot from the registrar of voters. The Democratic Party, the Democratic primary is as open as the state of California will allow us to make it. The Democratic Party encourages everyone to vote. Unfortunately, not all of our political parties do that anymore. Some political parties discourage people from voting, try to eliminate whole groups of people because they're afraid they're going to vote against them in the next election. The Democratic Party is still the American party that believes in democracy. We're willing to take our chances in a fair and free election. Now, if you're a member of another political party, any other political party, you have to change your party designation to Democrat or non-party preference before the vote. If you have any questions, if you have any questions at all about your status, want to change your status, anything like that, contact the Registrar of Voters. You can do it on their website, OC Vote. It's a good website, easy to navigate, a lot of information, or call them. 714-567-7600. You will get help. 
Now, just one word about voting as we go out, as we're losing time here. Just as important as voting. Voting is the basic way we have to, to participate in our government. Just as important to actually voting is voting the entire ballot. Don't stop at the top. Everybody knows the names and the offices at the top, president, Congress, state senate. It's those names down the ballot, those local, regional, countywide agencies, boards. People skip right over them. But their decisions, they make decisions for us that are things like quality of our water and how our electricity is generated. Their decisions are much more important, have much greater impact in our day-to-day -day life than almost any decision that's made in Washington or any decision that's made in Sacramento. That's why it's so important that we vote in those elections and have a voice. You don't vote. Not only don't you have a voice, nobody cares what you think. Well, we've, we run out of time. There's big changes in the way we vote. Final thing I'll say, there's big changes in the way, when, and where we're going to vote. So we can't talk about it today. There's no time. But on January 15th, and again on February 5th, on this day, the morning show here at Village TV on channel 6 and 406 with Ken Goldenberg and Lisa Hart, members of the Laguna Woods Democratic Club will be talking about this. January 15th, the changes in voting is one of the subjects we're going to be talking about. On February 5th, the whole segment will be involved in the changes in voting. So you don't want to miss that, really. You don't want to be shocked when you go looking for your polling place and find it's not there. So I want to thank Janice and Jonathan for being here. Thank you for being with us. We'll no doubt be back as the election gets closer. Give you a chance to speak to more, speak and hear more candidates running for local office in our area. So thank you very much, and we'll see you soon.